Today we're trying out six different cherry kombucha recipes. We've got cherry cola, cherry limeade, plain cherry, double cherry, cherry vanilla, and cherry ginger. And while it seems just as simple as pouring fruit juice into our kombucha, I think it's a good time to explore one of the troubles we run into when we're using fruit. And it all comes down to the fact that with kombucha, you're typically just trying to balance out sweet and sour. When you have too much of either, it throws things out of balance and then you miss a lot of the subtler flavors. You end up with something that's just candy sweet or just painfully tart. And when you finish your first fermentation, it should be out of balance. It should be very, very sour with just a hint of sweetness left. So when we bottle, we want to bridge that gap by adding back some sugar. And when we do this with just plain white sugar, it adds a lot of sweetness and almost no acidity at all. But when we use fruit sugar, we get plenty of both. And we could calculate that acidity as well, but I don't think we need to bother with titrations or moles because I don't think it's going to matter. Fruit has different acids than our kombucha would, and different acids have different levels of sourness. So we can't really compare one to the other. And the trap you can run into is if you add more fruit juice with every batch, trying to hit that same level of sweetness, but you're never really going to catch up because you're bringing acid each time as well. And you end up with something that's less kombucha than it is fruit juice. So in my opinion, it's best to add enough fruit juice so that the flavor of it comes through cleanly, but then to bridge the rest of the gap there with simple syrup. And then just as a side note, not all sugars are equally as sweet, but that's a problem for a different episode. Well, let's start bottling. Just as a side note, I prepared for this episode two whole years ago by planting cherry trees. Uh, and then one of them died, and then its replacement died. So I bought a bag of cherries and then ate those cherries. So now I've got some juice from the store. And we're going to start with our cherry cola, and we're going to start by using the black tea cola blend that I got from Fraser Tea because it tastes eerily like Coca-Cola. I'm going to use three grams of it. To that, I'm going to use 120 grams of our cherry juice, which came in at 11.4% sugar. This is a tart cherry juice for the record, so it tastes like an unsweetened cherry pie. I'm going to add 20 grams of our simple syrup to it. And I kind of feel like this one's going to be out of balance. But since a lot of the flavor of the cola is going to come from steeping over the next few days, it's hard to know how that's actually going to turn out. This is probably one of those recipes that I would have to balance over a few weeks. My guess would be that it is bracingly sour. But that's bottle number one. For bottle number two, we've got our cherry limeade. I'm going to start by grating a fourth of a teaspoon of lime zest. I'm going to add 20 grams of lime juice, 85 grams of cherry juice, and 18 grams of simple syrup. And that's bottle number two. For our plain cherry, I'm actually going to try and be responsible here and uh, make a test batch first. Let's go with 120 grams of cherry juice. Four grams of simple syrup. Let's see how far off we are here. It's just a little too sweet, which is exactly where we want it before bottling because some of that's going to be used up by carbonation. Used up to produce carbonation. Sometimes, no matter how much you stir it, you still get a lot of foam on top. My solution is just to keep pouring it and let that foam spill everywhere because you only end up losing about a teaspoon or so. And I've got plenty of kombucha, but limited time. That's bottle number three. Next up, we've got our double kombucha. And I'm going to start with 120 grams again of our cherry juice. And this time I'm going to add 17 grams of simple syrup. And how are we getting double cherry with the same amount of cherry juice? Well, I'm going to add cherry Kool-Aid because uh, it was very flavorful and it was very cherry-y. Even if it's kind of one note, it's still going to add a big punch of flavor. And all of our Kool-Aid kombuchas turned out really great last time, so uh, high hopes. That was one gram. And I say that as someone who hates the taste of artificial cherry. It tastes like disgusting cough syrup to me. But with enough sugar, it makes for a pretty pleasant kombucha. That's bottle number four. I think that Kool-Aid has permanently stained my finger. Next up, we've got cherry vanilla, which is sort of a cherry cream soda. Another 120 grams of our cherry juice. 
How did I get to 120 grams? Uh, it's kind of just from experience because that seems to be the point where a fruit juice goes from just being generally sweet to coming through clearly as that specific fruit. It's not a universal truth though. It doesn't apply to every fruit. It's just generally worked out well in the past for me. I'm gonna do another four grams of simple syrup. Oh, well, no, apparently it was seven. And then I've got some homemade vanilla extract. I'm gonna add two grams. It's been going for about almost a year now, so it's quite potent. I should really be pouring these in here first and taste testing them. I'm not very much intended to for all of these, but I just get too excited to bottle. That's number five. And finally, we've got our cherry ginger. And the ginger's another thing that's gonna release a lot more flavor as it steeps. So it's also one that we're just gonna have to wait and steep before we taste it. This time I'm gonna do 70 grams of cherry juice, eight grams of our simple syrup, and then I'm gonna do three grams of grated ginger because I like a pretty potent punch of ginger. Even when I add a large block of it, it still doesn't impart nearly as much flavor. And that's bottle number six. I'm probably gonna let all of these go for two and a half days. Usually it takes a lot less time to carbonate when you're using fruit juice and get kind of yeasty and funky if you let it go too long. So these are gonna carbonate and it cool in the refrigerator. And then we'll be back to uh, see what we did wrong. Time has passed and we are back. Hopefully we've got some carbonation. And we're starting with our cherry Coke. Quite a bit of fizz on that one. Smells exactly like a Coca-Cola. Kind of just tastes like the regular Coca-Cola, but too sour. Definitely needs like a pinch more sugar to level that out a bit. The Coca-Cola is coming through very clearly, but I'm not necessarily picking up cherry. Not even just like a hint of cherry pie. It's just Coca-Cola and then it's not too sour, but it's just noticeably a sharp punch of it. I can never be too mad at a Coke kombucha, but uh, this needs work. Perhaps less of the cola tea leaves, more of the cherry juice. It would take a few weeks of balancing to get that right, but uh, I don't know if this is the way to a cherry Coke anyway, because they're certainly not pouring any cherry juice into their cherry Coca-Cola. Tasty, but not a cherry Coke. Moving on. And now we're moving on to cherry limeade, so I imagine things aren't about to get less sour. Noticeably less carbonation, and that's presumably because of the lime, because in our lime episode we found that it takes a few extra days when you're working with so much citrus. <sighs> Smells like a cocktail. Super good, but it's good because it tastes like a limeade. Once again, there's no real note of cherry there at all. Start, middle, finish, it's all lime. And it's just sour enough, just sweet enough. It's that exact balance I like in a limeade. There's just no note of cherry there. But we did add quite a bit of cherry juice, so it's beginning to get a little bit concerning. I think we probably would have needed to bump the amount of cherry juice here uh, up quite a bit. Is it worth it to try and balance that out? Hard to say because uh, a limeade's good no matter what else you're adding to it. Moving on. Next up, we've got our plain cherry. Our first real look at just clean cherry flavor. Pretty good carbonation. It's sweet, it's crisp, it's carbonated, it's got just enough sweetness. It just has no cherry flavor. I think I maybe just need to run this again with the green tea blend and readjust some of those other values because the cherry is so, so muted. It's a very good kombucha. It's just the faintest hint of cherry in there. And that's only if you're really searching for it. But perhaps what we need is a double cherry. This is our cherry juice with cherry Kool-Aid. The color is much improved. Carbonation looks great. It smells like Kool-Aid powder. Oh, that's the cherry I'm looking for. It's just, distinctly cherry. 
It's a strong punch of it. It's not too singular, too narrow of a taste. It's got a pretty wide spectrum of flavors there. It's sweet, it's sour, it's carbonated. It's all in pretty good balance. This is the way to go, and I don't even think we need the fruit juice because I'm not sure it's adding anything. When we made the cherry Kool-Aid by itself, it tasted almost identical to this. Maybe I just need to remake everything with Kool-Aid. Next up, we've got cherry vanilla. Funky. It's got that creaminess, but not distinctly vanilla enough. A little too funky, a little too acidic. And there's just no distinct fruit flavor. It's, there's just nothing there. There's no cherry quality inside. It's just kind of slightly worse than kombucha. It's not terrible. It's just giving me nothing. There is a distinct vanilla aftertaste, but uh, this is probably my least favorite of the batch so far. Uh, let's move along. And finally, we've got cherry ginger, something that might pop. No. Distinctly ginger. This isn't going to be a cherry ginger ale because it shouldn't be that sweet, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's ginger ale. It's strongly ginger through and through. It's still got some sweetness, though. It's not too harsh of a punch. And it's slightly red, but it's not cherry at all. It's exactly as much cherry as the other bottles were. I mean, it's delicious because it's ginger ale, but uh, disappointing nonetheless. And it's just so thoroughly muted of a flavor that I don't even really know where to go from here. Sure, we could throw in Kool-Aid to everything, but... Uh, that really teach us very much. I was mostly just excited to use cherry juice, and cherry juice did not cut it in any context. It was a fine flavor, it just was not distinctly cherry. We could try to find cherry concentrate. We could try to freeze concentrate the cherry juice like we did with our watermelon episode, but even that didn't really bring out additional fruit flavor, at least not once it was in kombucha. It just concentrated so much of the acids as well that it kind of overwhelmed everything in the bottle. So I don't know if concentration's the way to go. We could try an extract, but that's still kind of just giving us the very narrow band of flavor that a Kool-Aid would. Probably even less so. So is the solution for cherry flavor to use cherry Kool-Aid? <sighs> I'm kind of thinking so, but uh, I'd rather not admit that. Because it only took a single gram of that powder to get there. Could be that we need to find sweet cherry juice instead of tart cherry juice. Concentrate that and use that instead, but... I'm not even sure if that's going to guarantee us a well-rounded cherry flavor. Something to think about, but I'm going to enjoy all of these bottles, and I'm probably going to use Kool-Aid, to be honest, whenever I need cherry flavor. I feel like I'm at least going to have to make cherry Coke again with this. Yeah, okay. I'll see you then. We are back. One last cherry Coke. This one is our Black Cola Tea Simple Syrup and a little bit of cherry Kool-Aid. Let's see where we're at. Cherry Cola actually use any cherry? Pretty good carbonation. Smells like cola. It's very good. There's cherry, there's cola. It's just a touch too sour and a touch too much cola. I mean, it's delicious. And it's a thousand percent better than our last cherry cola. But uh, if we're going purely for imitation, I don't think it's quite there yet. It's off by just very little, though. I think maybe an extra gram of simple syrup, uh, maybe half a gram less of our cola tea. And I think it'd be right there, because we are getting cherry, we are getting cola. It's just the slight imbalance. Yeah, it's just a four out of five. It's definitely on the right track, though. It's definitely a good variation if you've been drinking a whole bag of cola tea like I have. That's all I've got for you this week. Thank you for watching. This is Reckless Booch.